So we'll get going. Uh, we're going to start standing. So if you're standing, keep on standing. If you're not, like me, then let's get going. All right. Uh, let's start with, we've been doing head rolls, but let's start with shoulders today. So this is the circles and I'll walk you through it. Um, you're just going to start with four giant shoulder rolls forward. So really thinking about shoulders coming forward, taking those shoulder blades away from each other, plugging them up to your ears, pinching your shoulder blades together, and then dropping them down as much as you can. We're going to do two more. And then we're going to add in the elbows. So adding in the elbows. Same thing, you're just trying to make the biggest circle that you can with the elbows. And as you go into the back space, making sure that we're not flaring everything out, that we're still thinking about those glutes and those abs. And then adding the full arm circle. My arms get cut off on the video, but I think you can probably know what's going on up there. Good thing they don't really get cut off. It's some weird sci-fi, Black Mirror-esque type thing. And then we're just going to reverse it. So now we're going to start with the full arm, but we're going to go backwards, trying to reach as far back as you can. And again, right as we go into that back space, we don't want everything to release. We're keeping that core activated. This is two. We're going to go for two more of that full arm circle. And then we're going to go back to our elbows. So we're just kind of making our way backwards from where we started. So elbows. Two more. And then we're back to our shoulders. So just the biggest movement you can make with that whole shoulder girdle. Two more of these. And then thinking about those shoulders coming up and then letting them drop down and let them be relaxed and then up and drop down. And then we're gonna start with our roll downs. We've been doing varied roll downs. We're gonna continue on with that this week. So thinking about your head being heavy, chin to chest. As you roll down, you're almost resisting it, so I'll go side profile. You're thinking about your abs lifting up, like you're resisting it, but your head and your torso is really heavy. Breathing. And then at the bottom, let your torso truly be dead weight, so not holding any tension in the back of your neck. Checking that you're more in the balls of your feet, not the heels, because I want my hips over my ankles, so more in the balls of the feet. Taking a nice big inhale in, and then thinking about your belly lifting to restack that spine. So my belly button gets pulled up into my spine, and I restack myself. And then we're going to repeat it. Sorry, I'm just adjusting where I am on the screen. Because Augie is using my video, not your guys' video, for the online classes. So before I have any panic from you guys. Rolling back down. And this time I want you to walk out to a downward dog. So walking those hands out. Energy through those index fingers, those thumbs. Thinking about sending those heels down and then just checking those front of the ankles that you're not holding tension in the front of your ankles. And then holding for a couple more breaths and just seeing if you can get a little bit of more length in your torso. Thinking about the sits bones, right? Try to actually tilt and reach up to the ceiling. And walking yourself back. Slight bend in your knees if you need it, depending on what your body is going to give you today. Taking a nice big inhale in, filling that whole rib cage, abdominals up there. On your exhale, thinking about that belly pulling you up. Really sequentially rolling through that spine, letting those shoulders and head be heavy until the very last minute, until they restack back on. This time we're gonna go down into a really wide athletic stance. 
We've been doing it for the past couple weeks, but that's where we're going next. And I'm just going to change my position so you can see. Rolling down again. I'm thinking about my abs resisting this roll down. They continue to lift as I let my head and my torso come down. When you get to the bottom, bend your knees as much as you need to to put your hands down on the ground. Let your head be heavy. And then you're going to toe heel walk yourself out to an exaggerated wide athletic stance. So you're going to be way past shoulder width. Or if you were on ice, right, you'd be afraid that you're going to slip and do the splits. You're going to bend your left knee and you're going to keep your right leg straight. And then you're going to walk your hands over to the right side. So here I'm walking both hands over to the right side. I should be getting a pretty big side stretch on that left side. I might be getting a stretch on the outside of my left lower leg. And I might be getting a stretch on the inner thigh of my right straight leg. And then we're just going to flip it over to the other side. So my left leg is going to straighten. I'm going to walk my hands back center. And then I'm going to walk myself over to the other side. Oof. And breathing into it, right? We never want to hold our breath while we're stretching. Or as I like to say, you never want to hold your breath unless you're underwater. And then walking those hands back center, you're going to load through those hands as much as you need to to toe heel walk your feet back underneath you. And then taking a nice big inhale in. Exhale, really thinking about scooping those abdominals or lifting those abdominals up into your spine. Resisting, resisting, resisting. Oh. So here I'm really thinking about lifting up my abs, but I'm thinking about my ribs being heavy, trying to get a little bit more mobility from that part of my spine. Nice. One last one, which is going to take us down into a hip flexor stretch. I'm just moving on to my mat. So rolling down. Last variation. And this time I would just want you to walk out into a nice high plank. And then just take a moment in that high plank to feel everything turn on, right? So I'm going to squeeze my butt cheeks together. Or you can think about your sits bones reaching for each other. That's another way to kind of cue that. You can think about your belly pulling up into your spine without changing your spine. And then the shoulders pulling down the back of the rib cage. Thinking about energy off the top of my head, energy out my tailbone. And then I'm going to let my knees come down into quadruped. We're going to do a little hip flexor stretch. I've been sitting at my computer a lot more than I usually would. My hips are tight. So I'm going to assume that maybe that's the same case for you guys. So I'm going to bring my right foot forward. My left foot or my left knee stays down. And I'm going to think about, right, I, don't, I want more of a 90 degree angle with this front leg. So I don't want it super close to me. And then I'm going to think about pressing forward those hips. My belly is still lifted, so I haven't just let that go and gone into my lower back. Another way to think of it is dropping your tailbone, lifting up in your abs. So you should be getting a stretch, hopefully somewhere in the front of this down leg, right? The front of the hip, the quad. Checking in with those shoulders that you're not holding tension in them. Hands can go to the top of the thighs, but I don't want anybody like bracing. You can either stay here or you can take the left if you're following my same cueing. Same side as the leg that's down. That same arm reaches up. For me, it's my left. And again, I'm not letting that just collapse into my lower back. And then if you want to take the other hand up to meet it, hook those thumbs, and then you're going to think about doing a little back bend. Again, thinking about that belly still pulling in helps support that lower back. So in a weird way, this is kind of like a kneeling swan, right? We're trying to find that length from our shoulder blades up, not collapsing into our lower back. Coming back down, 
Same side, hand can find that knee, other hand can find that knee, pushing back, bringing that knee down, and then we're just gonna switch it over to the other side. So my left leg is gonna go forward, my right knee is down. Making sure this front foot's far enough forward that when I push my hips forward, I'm more at a 90 degree angle. I'm anchoring through that front heel. I'm thinking about opening up this hip that's down. In this case, it's my right leg. Checking in with those shoulders that it's not holding any tension. Taking the same arm as the leg that's down, that one reaches up, or you can stay where you are if that's a pretty intense stretch. Checking in with those shoulders that as you lift that arm up, the shoulders don't come with you. And then meeting it with your other hand, hooking those thumbs, and then thinking about Wide collarbones, like you're trying to send your chest up to the ceiling. Breathing. And then letting same side hand as the foot that's in front come down. Other one, pushing those hips back. Bringing both knees down. And then we're gonna go back into our plank. So both hands down into that nice quadruped position. Stepping one foot back, really feeling energy through that leg, turning on that glute, stepping the other foot back. So now we're in a nice high plank. We did this last week. Oh, it came back, it came back. So taking a nice big inhale in, exhale, lowering down to a point that you can hold. So any midpoint that you can hold. Nice big inhale in, exhale, lowering all the way down. Uncurl your toes, we're going into swan. You're gonna think about elbows getting pulled back, right? So my elbows are reaching for my feet. The top of my head is reaching forward. I'm almost pulling my spine forward as I come up into squat. And I'm gonna cue however high you wanna come up in your squat. I usually don't do full squat in our Pilates classes. So if you're straightening those arms all the way, shoulders away from your ears, belly is still lifted, hip bones, pubic bone might come off the ground. Then thinking about almost like pulling yourself forward to lengthen that spine as you roll back down. And on the swans, you don't have to come all the way up. You can just do a mini swan if you want to. Curl those toes under, because we're going to do this five more times. Curl those toes under. Now you do want to think about the elbows going more up to the ceiling. Nice big inhale in. Squeeze those glutes. Lift that belly. And on your exhale, push the floor away. Fly those hips back. Do a nice downward dog. Nice. Shifting forward. Now you know where we're going. We're just going to repeat it. So nice big inhale in. Exhale. Lower halfway down to a point that you can maintain. I don't care how low. Nice big inhale in. Exhale. Lower all the way down. Uncurl those toes. Shoulders. Pull down the back of your ribcage. Head leads. Thinking about lengthening through that spine as you come up into your swan. Belly is active. Setting your tailbone away from the top of your head. Thinking about lengthening your spine as you roll that torso back down. Tucking those toes back under. Take a nice big inhale and exhale. Squeezing glutes, lifting belly. Push that floor away. Fly those hips back. And again, shifting forward into that plank. If you want to just slowly lower down, if that's easy, you can do that. Here we go. Nice big inhale in. Exhale, because I know I have some shoulder people today. Inhale in. Exhale, lower all the way back down. Uncurl those toes. Shoulders away from your ears, thinking about lengthening through the top of your head. Lengthening through your tailbone. Lifting that belly. I'm trying to find most length in my lower back. I'm trying to find that extension in my upper back. Lowering back down. Curling those toes under. Energy through those legs. Nice big inhale. Exhale, push up. Fly those hips back. Oh, we're almost there. No, we're actually only at the halfway point. <laughs> Three more. Here we go. Let's pick up the pace a little bit. If you can't go the same pace and have to go slower and maybe do one less fewer, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Really thinking about turning on all those core elements, that pelvic floor, those glutes, those bellies, shoulders. Four down, two more to go. Energy up the top of the head. 
Energy up the tailbone. Let your breath help you. Make sure that you're uncurling those toes as you come up into the swan. Again, I don't care how high you come up in your swan. Maybe you're just doing a mini swan. Energy, energy, energy through those legs, glutes, and on, push. Oh, last one, last one. You guys are doing good. Technically, this is week four for this class, so that's why I'm amping it up a little bit. Even though this class isn't quite on the month, it's been a weird month. That's the understatement of the day. And one last lengthening. And I have to have you do one last, come on, push up. Here we go, nice big inhale, exhale. And then let your knees come down and push back into a quick child's pose. Um, for those of you, if you have knees that don't love child's pose, because I know I have a couple of you, I'm thinking about keeping this more of a 90 degree angle. You still can walk your hands out and think about dropping your chest. You're gonna get a little bit more thoracic extension with that version than sending your heels back. And then let's just take a moment to walk your, so your hands to one side. And again, if you're somebody who has a knee that's not gonna sit back, it's child's pose. You can always do your quadruped lateral stretch here. And then walk your hands to the other side. And then back center. Making your way to your belly, we're going to do those prone donkey kicks that we've been doing. So hand on top of hand and then forehead on top of hand. I'm just going to lift my head so you can hear what I'm saying. You're going to bring, let's start with our left leg. So you're going to bring your left heel over your left knee. As you do this, I want you to pay attention to the front of your pelvis. So right now my left hip bone popped up. I'm going to press that hip bone down, right? And this is going to be hard for those of you who have tight quads and hip flexors, like myself. So thinking about that left hip bone staying anchored as I press up to the ceiling for 10, 9, Eight, right, and hip bones also anchored. That doesn't pop. For five, four, three, hello hamstrings. Two, one, let that leg go long. I know my hamstring just activated. And then switching over to the other side. So right heel over right knee. I'm paying attention to that front pubic triangle. Two hip bones, one pubic bone down. Really thinking about stomping on the ceiling for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice, let that go down. Going into our double leg kick. So you're gonna transfer your arms to the back, to your lower back, to the back, and to your lower back, both of the above. And then you're gonna rotate your face so you're on one facial cheek. You're going to give me two kicks. You're going to lift up into like a handless swan and then rotate to the other. So here we go. I'm going to think about that front pubic triangle pressing into the ground as I kick, kick. I'm going to lengthen those legs down. I'm going to reach those arms long. I'm going to pull those collarbones back and then I'm going to rotate my head over to the other side and I'm going to repeat. So we're going to go for kick, kick, lengthen, and down and kick, kick. We're gonna go for three total on each side. So that's the second one. First side, kick, kick. And those of, again, those of you who have tight quads and hip flexors, you're really concentrating on keeping that front of your pelvis down that those hip bones don't pop up as you kick. Last one. Nice. And then we're gonna go into single leg kicks. Both these exercises are pretty classic Pilates, but I don't, I don't do them all the time, I probably should. So now you're gonna come up like you're a sphinx, right? So my elbows are underneath my shoulders. I'm thinking about my collarbones getting pulled forward. Again, I'm thinking about that pubic bone anchoring down. My belly is lifted, so I'm not just collapsed down. 
I'm supported in that midsection. Now we're gonna do kick, kick, but single leg. So just kind of like what we did, kick, kick, and then lengthen down, and then switch. Kick, kick, and down. Kick, kick, and down. Kick, kick, and down. As you're doing this, pay attention anteriorly that this hip doesn't get popped up, right, as you kick. That it stays lengthening and pressing into the ground. Let's go for three more to each side. Finding that extension in your upper back. That belly is still pulling in. Last one each side. Nice. Let your hands find underneath your shoulders. Let your torso come down. And then pushing back either into your child's pose or that modified child's pose or cat-cow, right? So doing whatever variation is best for your body today. And giving it about, I don't know, let's go two more breaths, whatever variation you're doing. I'm just kind of moving through all three so people have different visuals. Rolling on over to your back. We have our single leg circles. Oh, and the vacation series. No, that didn't go away. It came back. It came back. One more week. One more week. Because don't you feel like you're on vacation with the snow coming down? No, Allison, I don't. All right. Pulling out my pants. Here we go. Um, let's start with the hamstring stretch before we do our single leg uh, circles. We've been doing this all month. So holding on to the back of that leg, wherever you can hold on to. Let's start with our right leg. It'll be easier for me to do. So right leg, our left leg can either be bent or it can be straight. I'll let you choose. Bent feels better for me, so I'm going there. Holding on to that leg wherever you can comfortably hold on to, right? So some of you is gonna be back in hamstring. Some of you it might be all the way up to your ankle. So where you can comfortably hold on to, and you're just gonna breathe. You're just gonna pull that, gently pull that leg toward you, getting that posterior side stretch. And then you're gonna actively pull towards toes, towards nose. That's gonna increase that stretch. Breathe into it. Then you're gonna actively point your toes, and once they're pointed, you're gonna try to draw that leg a little closer. And then once you've drawn it a little bit closer, you're gonna let that foot relax. So it's not pointed or straight. Again, breathing, make sure you're not holding your breath. And this should be a gentle stretch. So I don't want anybody yanking on their leg or like, I'm gonna get the best hamstring stretch ever. No, nope, that's not what we're going for. Then actively pulling your toes towards your nose. That's gonna increase the stretch, breathe into it. Don't hold your breath. And then when you point your foot, you're gonna try to draw that leg a little closer. And then once it's closer, you just let that foot relax. So in theory, all of you should now kind of be in a deeper hamstring stretch than you were at the beginning. Let that knee hug into your chest. Let's take it out to the side like you're going over to your armpit. And then we're going to send the right leg long down on the ground, and then we're going to switch over to the other side. So again, right leg can be bent or straight. Left leg is the one that's up in the air. Grabbing a hold of that leg wherever it's naturally comfortable for you. Foot's relaxed right now. Gently pulling that leg towards you. Letting your central nervous system now adjust to this new position, this new stretch. And then actively pulling your toes towards your nose. Breathing into it. Pointing that foot and then try to draw that leg a little closer. Now actively pulling those toes towards your nose. 
Breathing, you're out, holding your stretch as that stretch increases. Pointing that foot and now draw that leg a little closer. Making sure that you're not holding tension in your shoulders or your head, right? That you're not like, oh. And then let that knee kind of hug into your chest. And then kind of hug it out to the side, like you're trying to hug that knee into your armpit. Our single leg circles, we're going to do six in each direction. Let's start with our left leg down and our right leg up to the ceiling. Uh, those of you who have tight hamstrings and can't get a straight leg, that's fine. You can either do bent or you can do tabletop with this. So I'll show tabletop just so that you can see it, um, or any variation, I'll probably go through them. Left leg is anchored. So I want you to think about digging that left heel down. That left hamstring is reaching for the ground. It's probably not going to touch it, but you're thinking about reaching it. Heaviness in the back of both sides of your pelvis. You're going to take that leg across your body and then around. Hands are down by your sides, or if you want to, you can hold those hips to see if they're rocking and rolling. You're using your breath as you do this. Connect it to the movement. We have one more in this direction, and then we're going to switch directions. So now going away. Also, if you get a clunking in your hip, that's common in this. Sometimes it doesn't, I would say it hurts, it's just kind of annoying. Try to change the size of your circle if that applies to you. We have one more in this direction. Nice, and then just hug that knee into your chest and send that leg long. So I'm gonna think about the right heel reaching for the ground, my right hamstring reaching down, having this with the back of both sides of the pelvis. Leg can be straight, bent, or tabletop. I'm showing the tabletop version today. Nice big inhale in. Exhale, circle back around. Using your breath to connect you. One more in this direction. And switch directions. My hips are going for rocking and rolling. So I'm going to refocus on that right heel, that right hamstring, and that belly pulling again. See if I can get that rock and roll out. Last one. Nice. Knee heads into chest and send it down. Uh, upper up curls is where we're going next. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we're going to add a little extra leg extension and open, close, bend knees back in. So you can watch the first one or you can follow along. We're going to go for, oh, let's do an odd number. Let's go for seven. So starting legs and tabletop, hands down by your sides. And here, before we ever move, I want you to think about actively pressing that lower back into the ground. So we're going to be in a natural posterior pelvic tilt. Taking a nice big inhale in, exhale, chin to chest, come up into the upper row curl. You can either stay here, you can extend those legs long, open, close, knees come back in, try to lift higher, and then roll back down. There you go, here we go, that's your coordination. Six more, nice big inhale in. Exhale, chin to chest. Lengthen those legs. Lower back does not pop off the ground. So you are only lengthening those legs as low as you can maintain. Letting your breath help you. You should be either inhaling or exhaling. At no point you should you be holding your breath. Four down, three more to go. Really thinking about the posterior side helping you with this upper ab curl as well, right? Like your shoulder blades are almost scooping you up. You know, like a shovel scoops up snow, which hopefully we will not be doing later with all the snow that's coming down. Hopefully it melts. Nice, I think that was our last one, so hugging those knees into your chest. Um, we are gonna do the ab series, but let's not go there yet. Using those knees, rock and roll yourself up into sitting. And we're gonna go to our side stretch. So we've been doing this in uh, diamond legs, and let's stay with that today. So diamond legs, they can be a long diamond. You don't need those legs really close to you. 
And then you're going to think about stacking that spine, right? So head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, hand out to the side. You're going to think about both side bodies lengthening as you go up and over to the side. You're going to the left. And then my head stays on my spine. So I'm trying not to let it drop off. That's my favorite cheat. My shoulders stay stacked. So from a side profile, this top shoulder does not get pulled forward. And then I'm going to think about taking a nice big inhale and exhale. My side bodies or my postural muscles bring me back up to sitting. And then over to the other side. So if the diamond legs are still a hard position for you, meaning if you're still in the diamond legs and then come back up and you're kind of curled back, you can always grab a pillow. If you do have a mat, you can roll it up. Give yourself a booster seat. It should help the diamond legs for those of you who have tight posterior sides, but it still might be hard. We're going for three to each side. This is the second side, second time. And really, as you come up, thinking about the muscles bringing you up, that you're not cheating with your arms by pushing the floor away, that you're lengthening out of the bottom side body just as much as you're lengthening the top side body. Last time. And then let's go into a straddle stretch. I'm doing a little bit more hip, 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 hip openers today. Um, my hips feel like they need it. Those of you who always work at a desk, I don't envy you. All right, so uh, wide legs is what, why does your body well allow, right? Um, and then you're gonna think about energy. Let's do energy through those legs. So I'm actively pulling my toes up towards the ceiling. Kneecap should always be up towards the ceiling. Option A, if you have that mobility, walk yourself forward. Option B, that's laughable. Hands behind you, lengthen through that spine, and push yourself forward. So as I go forward, I'm thinking about my pelvis getting pushed forward, but my femurs are almost rolling back. And I do want to, if you're going for the reaching forward version, I do want you to think about lengthening through that spine, that you're not here, right? I can get a lot lower if I curve that spine, but I really want to open up those hips. So I'm going to think about that tailbone reaching away from the top of my head. And then if you're going for the reach forward version, you're going to walk yourself over to the last leg. Right hip stays heavy. You're going to rotate. And again, you're kind of reaching forward over that leg. If you're in this version, left hand goes back, right hand goes forward, rotate, and then you're going to kind of push yourself forward. So paying attention to the opposite hip, your right hip. In this case, if you follow my left leg lead, then it stays anchored, but I'm not letting it pop up. And then walking myself over to the other side or rotating to the other side if you're doing that version. Nice. Coming back center. And I do want everybody to take their hands behind them, shoulders away from your ears. And you're going to kind of take, you're going to kind of rock your pelvis forward and back, right? So I'm going to think about pushing my right hip forward and then rolling it back pushing my left hip forward and rolling it back. So you're lengthening through that spine and you're just kind of taking that pelvis for a walk. It's not going anywhere. And you might feel all sorts of stretches that you've never felt before. Like I, on my right side, it's going all the way down to all my adductors that cross over that knee joint. My left side's a little bit happier than my right. And then we're going into saw. So hopefully doing that little bit of a stretch kind of helps with our saw. So here we're going to bring it still wide, but you're going to bring them in so you're more like shoulder width apart. Again, if you have a hard time sitting up on your six bones, you can either bend the knees or you can take a pillow or roll up your mat for a booster seat. Hands out to the side, breathing through this. So just connect breath to your movement. You're going to rotate. Let's rotate over to that left leg. My right hip stays heavy. I'm going to dive forward past that left pinky toe as I reach forward and back with both arms. Take a nice big inhale in. Exhale and scooping to reset. 
and then I'm changing it over to the other side. So nice big inhale in, exhale. And again, if your breath is different than mine, that's okay. Just make sure that you're breathing through it. This is another easy one that people hold their breath at some point during it. And if you find that you're holding your breath, either take an inhale or an exhale. Really staying anchored through both hip bones. We're gonna go four to each side. So that's the second side, second time. Every time you go, see if you can get a little bit more rotation, a little bit more dive. And as I'm reaching forward, this opposite hip and abdominals is almost pulling in that back diagonal. Kind of opposing forces. Posing stretches, maybe is a better way to say it. Reaches, lengths. Three down, one more to go. Nice, let those legs come together. And then we're just gonna roll down. Actually, let's go into our uh, ab series. Week three, all five exercises, 10 reps of each. Maybe you've remembered, maybe you don't. I'll talk you through it. So we're sitting up tall. Let's start with our left leg. So I'm gonna hold the back of that left thigh. I'm gonna roll down to the back of my pelvis, the back of my waistline is lifted, but my shoulders and my rib cage is lifted. I said that backwards. Waistline down, ribs lifted. I'm gonna change my hands so they're pressing to the front of that left knee, and then I'm gonna switch. Look familiar? Yes! We're gonna go with eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hug those knees in or tabletop. Use them to lift a little higher. Arms and legs reach away. Reach away and then circle back around for 10. And nine. I think last week we did eight. Eight, seven, Six, five, so those who are just joining us week one, I'm sorry, four, but not sorry. Three, two, one, stay lifted. Let's stay with the left leg reaches long, right, or you're holding to the back of the left leg, right leg reaches long. Get that leg come a little higher. Oh yeah, here we go. Two pulses, pulse, pulse, switch. Pulse, pulse, switch, pulse, pulse. Switch. Should be six, five, four, three, two, one. Both legs go up to the ceiling, hands go behind your head. Think about wide elbows. Hand presses into head, presses into hands, and vice versa. Lower back stays on the ground as you send those legs away and bring them back up for 10. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. If you can't go low with your legs, that's fine. Be honest with your lower back. Two, one. Left leg bends, right leg lengthens, right armpit to left knee for bicycle for 10. Nine, you're heavy through both back sides of the pelvis. So you're not rocking and rolling side to side. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice, hug those knees into your chest. Go all the way down. Feet find the ground. Hands go to a giant T. Uh, your figure four stretch, I think I actually did this in my class yesterday. I, I do like this stretch. So let's cross the left ankle over right knee. You're gonna dump your legs over so that you're standing on your left foot. Ooh. That oof is because this is tight on me. Hello. So you should be feeling a stretch in this left hip. If you're really tight, it might actually also kind of creep up into your lower back area. 
If you're somebody who's like, nope, don't feel the stretch, Allison. Then you're going to take this right knee and you're going to press the legs up more into your shoulders. I'm going to take mine back down because this is actually quite intense stretch for me on the side. All right. Using your obliques to bring the legs back. So thinking about being heavy through the left back of shoulder, left back of ribs, left back of waistline to bring those legs back up. Unhook your left, hook your right. Now you're going to dump your legs over to the left side, standing on your right foot. And again, adjust that stretch as you need to. Some of you might not be able to get all the way down, and that's fine, right? You might be somewhere in this halfway point. That's totally fine. And as we're doing this, we're also kind of thinking about the heaviness in the back of the right side, right? So I'm trying to find that heaviness of my right back body reaching for the ground. Holding for about two more breaths. And then we'll go into our side leg series, which I don't think I changed anything for this week. No, I didn't. So taking that nice big inhale in on your exhale, that right back body really reaches for the ground and those obliques, right, which kind of go across our body, we're going to help bring those legs back up. Okay. Roll it on over to your side. Woo! Oh, I'll give you a choice. Since we're, we're doing week four, I rarely do this, but let's do it today. Choice number A, what we always do, you're on your bicep. Choice number B, you're up on your elbow, but this is not up on my elbow, right? I'm not watching TV. I'm actually on my elbow, and my whole bottom waistline is lifted. So that's your option B. Woo! We'll see. We might get into trouble with this one, but we're going to start with it. So those are two options. Here we go. Top leg lifts. It lifts and lowers for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is where I mean we might get into trouble. We're going to see what happens. Top leg lifts or bottom leg squeezes up to match it. Oh, Woo! nine, eight, seven, six. Oh, I have to concentrate on this one. Five, four, four three. Elisa's cheering me on. Two, two <laughs> one. Okay, bottom leg finds the ground, top leg finds the ground. We do have to adjust for our banana. So now you are gonna go down to your bicep if you're not there. But let's try to keep this top arm up for our little extra challenge for week four. Hips stay stacked. Do not let that top hip roll back. You're gonna think about lengthening through your arm, lengthening through your leg for a little tiny side crunch. It's tiny, keyword tiny. 10, nine. Eight, seven. So shoulders are starting to stay stacked. Don't let this bottom shoulder pull forward like we would in a cycle. Oh, let's go for three, two, one. Oh, holy moly, we're not done yet. Uh, if you want to go back to this version, you can. So pop them back up or you can stay down to your bicep. Bottom leg comes forward, top leg hovers above it. And then we're gonna step behind us for 10. This hasn't changed. Nine, other than whether you wanna do the advanced side body. Four, five. As you step behind you, make sure that your abs are pulling in, that we don't let that hyper extend. And truly really try to step behind you, not straight down. I think we have two more. Two, we're somewhere around there. If you ever take a one-on-one -on -one Pilates with me, you know I'm horrible at counting. We're nine, 
Eight, it's really the least thing that I'm worried about. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let that top knee find the bottom knee. Whew. Now let's just go straight to the other side. I know, I've been usually nice and giving you a stretch, but maybe later. All right, so either a bicep version or a very stylized laying at the beach version. I need to adjust. Okay, here we go. So I'm really thinking about this bottom waistline lifting. I'm stacking my hips and I'm going to lift and lower that top leg for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Bring that leg, top leg about hip height, and then you're really gonna think about squeezing your inner thighs, especially high up on your inner thigh. For 10, nine, it will help. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Oh, I'm smiling through it. I'm smiling through it. All the way down for our little bananas. Let's take that top hand up. If you need to do a light touch, you can. A uh, little tiny, right? You're not coming up that far. You're thinking about keeping the shoulders stacked, the hips stacked for 10. Nine. Pulling up in your abs is going to help with this. Eight. So they are active, they're not relaxed. Six, five, four, three. Also looking straight forward will help keep your shoulders stacked. Two, one. Woo. Uh, back up if you're doing this version, bottom knee comes forward. Readjusting, there we go. Okay, top knee is hovering over bottom knee, but they are not touching. Stepping behind you. And thinking about squeezing that gluten hamstring as you step behind you. Abs are pulling up, or you want to think about your pubic bone pulling up into ribs. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two. I know, I bet you all wish you had a blue band at your knees right now. I know, I know. And then lift and lower for 10. So my leg is still in that extension. Nine. Eight. I'm still thinking about pulling up my belly. Seven. Six. My bottom waistline is still lifted. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Nice. Let that knee come back down. All right. You know we did the vacation series twice the past two weeks, so we have to do it again. So I'm going to have you all come up to sitting because we started sitting the second time, or the first time. We are now in the second time. Uh, everything's going to start on the right this time because everything started on the left last time. Grabbing hold of that right back thigh, scooping those abdominals, right, our pelvis, waist lines down, ribs are up. Change those hands. Here we go. Ten of everything. You guys got it for ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knees come in. Lift a little higher. Everything moves away from each other. Ten. Nine. If you're finding it's getting really necky, come down and then reset. I don't know what number we're on. We're going to call this four, three, two. We have our straight leg after this. So straight leg, single leg. You're holding on to the back. Left leg reaches long. Come up a little higher. You're going to pulse, pulse. Nine, eight, seven, six. No tension in the shoulders. Five. Four, heaviness in the back of the waistline. Three, two, one. 
two, one. Both legs go up. Hands go behind your head. Remember, the name of the game is keep your lower back on the ground. I don't really care how low your legs go. I do care that you keep your lower back on the ground. This is two. We're going to count up for this one. Three. Four. Wide elbows. Five. You're not pulling on your neck, though. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. After this, we have our bicycle. Ten. Right knee comes in, left armpit to it. For ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six. Can you lift a little higher? Five, four. Our right, is the pelvis stable. Three, two, one. Nice. Woo. All right. Joseph Pilates would be very angry at me if I didn't have us do our bridges. I'm just going to slide down a little bit. Last thing we're doing. Okay. So down by your side, your hands are down by your sides. This should actually feel kind of nice. We're gonna do the overhead reach version that we've been doing. So taking a nice big inhale in, exhale, really thinking about pulling pubic bone up into ribs. As that happens, femur and kneecaps get pulled forward. The top of your bridge, I do want you to pay attention that you're not letting this release my ribs and my belly, right? Then I'm actually trying to lengthen my back, my lower back keeping my hips reaching for my ribs. Oh yes, I'm making you hold that bridge for a long time. Hands float up to the ceiling, now they reach overhead. That's not happenstance, I know I was. Take a nice big inhale in, exhale. Really articulate down through that spine. It's almost like somebody has a hold of your wrists and they're pulling your arms overhead. So you get a little traction on that spine. Now once your pelvis finds the ground, your arms float back down. We're gonna do that for four more, for a total of five. Taking a nice big inhale in. Exhale, really thinking about scooping those abdominals, right? So that idea of the hips reaching for the ribs, you've just started it from the very get-go. Lengthening through those femurs, the kneecaps, floating those arms up to the ceiling, all the way overhead. Shoulders away from your ears, and the heaviness that you can find in your spine. How heavy can you be in your spine? Laying each vertebra back down on the ground as you roll back down. Once your pelvis finds the ground, let those arms float back down. We have three more. Taking a nice big inhale in. Exhale. I've said this before. I hate bridges. They're really, really far on my hate list. And it's because I have such tight quads and hip flexors that it's actually not a very easy position for me to do correctly. So I work at it. I know you might be surprised, but I'd rather do 24s than bridges any day. We have two more bridges. Last thing you're doing, other than maybe coming back up to standing. Last one. Hopefully as you're doing this, hopefully you're finding a little bit more articulation through your spine. Feeling a little bit more mobility through it all. Rolling down. We started standing, so we're gonna end standing. So I'm just gonna have you roll on over to your stomach. This should look familiar. Hands <laughs> underneath shoulders, toes tucked under. We're almost there. Energy through those legs. A nice big inhale in. Exhale. Think about that pubic bone reaching to your ribs, just like we did in the bridge to help you with your body. Send those hips back to a nice down dog. Send those heels down. Walk those hands towards your feet. I'm just going to shimmy back a little so I don't pop off the camera when I come up. Let that head be heavy. Let those ribs be heavy. Slight bend in your knees. Take a nice big inhale in. Exhale. Scoop. Those abdominals.
Let those shoulders slide down the back of the rib cage. Thinking about being long in the front of your pelvis, back of the pelvis is down. I don't want you tucked, but. And then just feeling that length in your spine, you feel a bit lo longer, taller than you started class with. And then just taking a moment to feel that alignment, ear over shoulder, shoulder over rib, rib over hip, hip over knee, and knee over ankle. All right, we're done. Thank you for joining me today. I love to see all your faces and everybody signing up. Since I